Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. It is Monday. It is back to the work routine. The weekend is over, unfortunately, and I have to go back to being an adult today. Um, but I have decided to take the day completely off the bike. Uh, I've only taken about three days off the bike in the last month. Uh, my fatigue and training peaks is like a negative 34. If you don't know what that means, ideal fatigue is somewhere around zero. Um, uh, positive means you're very re well rested, but not in uh, not in necessarily the best of fitness. And when you're negative, the more negative you go, you may have a high fitness, but your fatigue is really high. And I feel it on the bike. I'm not doing this just based on a number. I have felt the fatigue on the bike. I have felt that you know maybe when I get up out of the saddle and do a quick sprint or a little power climb up a hill, my legs continue to burn and they do not recover as quickly as they were maybe would say a week ago so I'm gonna take a complete day off the bike today and then uh, kind of feel things out on Tuesday uh, may just do a regular recovery spin on Tuesday uh, there are some races this weekend there's a road race on Saturday and a criterium available on Sunday um, I will see um, the shoulders are feeling a little bit better today but I haven't been really doing anything pushing them on the bike so I'm hoping, you know, to be in pretty decent uh, physical condition to kind of put my hat in the ring for at least one, if not both of those races, we will see. But uh, today is just going to be a day focused on rest, getting a few things done around the house, getting myself squared up for the week, and hopefully back to uh, full-on training for the remainder of the week here. <laughs> So I just finished watching the Hammer series online here, um, the new series cycling race, which I thought was really fun and interesting to watch. And GCN did a great job of offering that up live to all of its viewers and leaving it up on YouTube for people to watch if they didn't, um, if they don't align with the time zone. So I watched it on replay mode here. But I thought it was a really exciting uh, series to watch. It was very much a variable series. It was, it was just a really kind of cool format. And I think that that would be a really awesome amateur series race for local promoters to look at putting together, whether it's a club series race, if they can get it sanctioned by USAC uh, here in the US or by other uh, national cycling bodies. I think that there's a lot of people that would gravitate and a lot of teams that would gravitate towards stuff like that because you have riders with different strengths and you can almost put together your your dream team if you will um, to put together these series and I would have a lot of fun doing a race like that and it's kind of one of the very few times in professional cycling where you know you sit back and you watch uh, a cycling race that is televised and you're like wow you know this is this is kind of like what we do as amateur racers. A lot of what's televised are your grand tours and it's just, it's so unattainable. None of us do 21 day stage races. Hell, none of us even do like seven day stage races for the most part. M most of what's available for the uh, the amateur is maybe a, a two or three day stage race, but it's kind of one of those, hey, this is a three day event, but this is, this is practical, this is attainable, so I hope that local uh, cycling bodies and race promoters will, will kind of take a page from the book of the Hammer series. I mean, they're in their first year and I think they did a pretty good job. There's a few bugs that need to be worked out, but I think it was a really cool format. I think it's something that you could kind of pair back into uh, a local sphere and uh, inspire more team activity. Because I think local racing is so individualistic and racing in general is you know, while there are teams, it's very much uh, based on individual excellence and performance. It's one of those things that kind of brings you right back to the team mentality. I think it'd be a great team building event that if you and your, your cycling team can get together and race as a team and not as individuals, and they'd have to figure out something with upgrade points for the, the people who cycled on those teams. but. You know, for your team to take a podium spot, to take, you know, um, a gold as an entire team together. You learn so much about one another and you'd be able to kind of 
build and develop as a team as opposed to a bunch of people getting together wearing the same kit, playing at some tactics, uh, and getting through your local crit or road race. But at any rate, I really very much enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys thought of the Hammer series if you watch it down below. If you haven't seen it, check out GCN's channel. They have um, all three days, um, all three events. The the chase, the sprint, and the climbing event all um, archived for you to watch. Um, you know, good teams on board. I think maybe the time of the year was probably a little, it probably precluded some of your, your bigger hitter names from being involved in these team events because you're kind of between the zero and we're, you know, nipping at the heels right now of the tour. But at any rate, it was still fun to watch. I'd love to see, you know, this event with some of your, your bigger names, your Peter Sagans, your Mark Cavendish, even Chris Froome, uh, and see how much things would change if, uh, you know, you put some of these names into the mix. But at any rate, check it out. I will see if I can link uh, the three videos down below so that you guys can find them if you haven't seen it yet or if you feel like watching them again. But now I had to get myself in the shower and get ready for work. So considering there's no training today, I thought today would be a perfect day to talk about essential oils. I have made mention over the past uh, couple weeks about using these essential oils. Uh, I got a 16 uh, oil kind of mixed set starter pack thing um, a couple weeks ago and I decided to kind of try things out uh, on some recommendations from athletes who have used them to help support general health and athletic performance and recovery. So uh, I'll show you kind of what I've got in the box, what I've been using them for so far, what some of those things are recommended or used for. And if any of you, uh, I've already gotten a couple comments from people who are a little bit more experienced using essential oils for just general health uh, or possibly physical uh, recovery or performance. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for recipes, for blends, for things that you use that you kind of swear by, please leave them in the comments down below because I'm very new to this and I'm just trying to kind of self uh, research this type of stuff and uh, get the best that I can out of it. So first things first, what are you going to need to use essential oils? Well, A, you're going to need the oils. Uh, there are some uh, good combo packs out there. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them directly from the websites um, that will give you some of the big hitter type of uh, essential oils, the commonly used ones. And um, as long as you find something that's 100% the essential oil, like therapeutic grade, uh, high quality essential oils that don't have like additives and things and scents. You know, there's a difference between an essential oil that is an actual essential oil, which is um, derived directly from the plant, and then essential oils that are there to just kind of add nice smells, like to act as almost like a candle for your home. Uh, you want something that's 100% the essential oil, so it's safe for either consumption or application to your skin or putting into a diffuser. So you will need the oils. And really the only other thing that you'll probably want to get if you're using essential oils is a diffuser. There are some uh, combo packs that will have a diffuser with the essential oils. Uh, I use a tabletop version of it. So I'll kind of show you the diffuser I have. It's a very simple um, type of device, but I'll show you mine here. All right, so here I have a tabletop diffuser. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes and different prices everywhere from about 10 bucks to maybe $30. Uh, this plugs right into the wall get that out of the way uh, and it opens up on the top and basically it's a very simple product uh, it's got kind of the mechanism to help diffuse the oils but this here is just a water reservoir so usually you put about 100 mils of water I'm just putting a little bit in there to kind of get something uh, into the base and what you'll do is it'll probably have some kind of lid here like so with a hole in the top and you can see that there's a, a matching hole or vent in the bottom and when you turn it on, um, it will, you can see if this is coming out of here, it almost looks like a smoke or a vapor. Uh, and this is basically just diffusing uh, the liquid into a, uh, a vapor. 
so that it is uh, sending the essential oils or uh, the the scent into the room. Now this is actually a cold vapor. This is not like a humidifier. This is not warm. This thing does not is not hot. It's not unsafe to keep next to your bed. Uh, it's just a, a cool vapor. It's just turning that liquid uh, into the vapor and then the oils kind of diffuse into the room. So people use the diffuser in a number of different ways. I use it to put a blend in. It's near my bed. Uh, I use it over the course of uh, the night while I'm sleeping and uh, that blend of oils has uh, different benefits for me. Some people use it just to put a nice scent into the room to keep the house smelling nice and fresh. But what I've noticed is if I use a certain combination of oils especially right now when allergens are uh, very rife out in the um, out in our environment. My window is not far from my bed. I've been waking up sometimes with just a mild amount of congestion in my throat and my nose and as I get moving my lymphatic system going things start to clear out. I don't have major allergy issues but I have noticed feeling a little bit plugged in the morning because of all the pollen that's coming through the window. Since using this diffuser over the last couple of weeks I've noticed that I'm not waking up with that same amount of congestion. I think I can uh, attribute it to more of the uh, diffuser and less to just complete uh, coincidence because I went from waking up each day with a little congestion to not waking up with any congestion at all. So I'll show you a couple of the uh, oils that I have here, a couple of blends that I use, the blend that I use each night that's kind of helping with recovery, relaxation, and uh, waking up feeling a little less congested. So as I said, this, uh, this box here, it came with 16 essential oils in it. Um, and they're all kind of have different benefits to them. I have not used all of them yet And I don't know about each and every one of them But I'll just go through them real quick Let you know what some of the benefits are that I know of some of the ones that I've used and what I think about them So first and foremost, there's peppermint Peppermint is very highly recommended uh, to help kind of energize your body. Uh, it's something that people recommend to give yourself a, a little bit of energy and kind of wake up the brain, um, you know, even before like an event or race, like putting a little bit maybe right here uh, on your neck or somewhere where it's kind of infusing, you know, in through your nose, in through your um, respiratory system. Uh, peppermint is one of those things that's kind of an invigorating essential oil. They use peppermint a lot in uh, toothpastes and mouthwash. Uh, peppermint doesn't clean your teeth. It actually kind of helps invigorate you. It gives you that little bit of a tingle that makes you kind of feel like everything is working and, and getting around and you know that it's kind of touched all the areas of your mouth where you feel that tingle and that freshness everywhere. The next one we got here, this is bergamot. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know if it's the French pronunciation, if it's bergamot, but uh, I'm going to call it bergamot and, and somebody please correct me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, but that is something that has been touted as good for uh, recovery, for sore muscles, something that you could apply topically. Uh, you can put right on your calves, right on the backs of your, uh, your thighs and hamstrings uh, that help kind of infuse the muscles with uh, some recovery. Um, I don't know how to describe the smell. It's very, I don't know, it's like a, a tree-like smell almost. Not like pine, but something akin to like a, a strong tree-like smell. So it's not, it's not like a sweet smell, but it's not, it's definitely not uh, a repulsive smell. It actually kind of, uh, once you've applied it after a couple minutes, you don't really smell it anymore. Uh, this is rosemary. Most people know what rosemary smells like. Uh, if you've had like a rosemary chicken or it's used a lot in, uh, red sauces and Italian dishes. Uh, this is mostly used for relaxation if you put it in a diffuser. It's one of those very calming type of scents. I don't know if there's any topical um, uses for rosemary. Again, uh, you'll have to tell me if you know. This is something I'm going to continue to research and is that if I get more information or interesting or pertinent, pertinent information uh, to cyclists and athletes, I will include it in future videos. Uh, sweet orange is another one that uh, I don't know if that's just something that has a nice pleasant smell or if it actually has um, some benefits. I have not seen it yet in terms of a blend for like recovery or energy um, or sore muscle usage. Not to say that sweet orange doesn't have any benefits, it's just not something I've come across yet, but it does smell very pleasant. So it's one of those things that you can maybe add to a blend in your diffuser to make it smell a little sweeter, a little bit more palatable than a mixture of different oils. Uh, cinnamon leaf. 
Uh, cinnamon, I know, has some benefits, uh, some kidney benefits, things like that uh, when consumed. Um, so you could put a couple of drops in this in maybe like a tea or a hot water. Um, it smells very pleasant as well, so you can add it to a diffuser. It's also very calming. So it's kind of one of those things that you can add to a diffuser to kind of help calm and, and relax, uh, you know, after a hard day of training or work. Uh, lemon, it's got uh, a lot of your citruses have a lot of benefit in terms of cleansing. Uh, it smells very, um, smells very good. I feel like lemon is probably one of those things that's a little bit more uh, potent when uh, taken in orally. So if you add a little bit of lemon to your tea or your hot water, um, it's one of those things that kind of help clean you out type of thing. Um, this is frankincense. Very attributed, uh, very much attributed to times like Christmas. Again, it's just a very, very calming, relaxing type of uh, oil for maybe your diffuser at night. It'll help you kind of relax and unwind. Again, haven't found any real topical or oral uses for that, but I am very new to this. Uh, this is lemongrass. This smells like Fruit Loops. It smells actually very good. Uh, lemongrass is one of those things that is used mostly for recovery. Uh, I've used it topically put on my calves, my hamstrings, uh, areas of my back, my shoulders, um, and it kind of helps, it absorbs into the muscles and the bloodstream and, and just kind of helps the muscles recover. Uh, I will say a note is when I add these things topically, uh, it is not something that gives you a feedback kind of uh, loop, if you will. It's not something that tingles, it doesn't burn, you really don't feel it on your skin, you do smell it, but it's kind of one of those things that works silently. You, you might be able to smell it when you put it on, but it's not like you're going to get this tingling or mentholated feeling through your skin or your pores. So don't be alarmed if you use it and you don't have that feeling. You shouldn't feel any kind of burning at all. You shouldn't even know it's there, to be honest with you. Uh, next on the list is pine needle. Um, one of those things that probably is mostly for diffusing. Probably don't want to maybe consume that. Probably doesn't really taste the best. Just kind of a relaxing kind of oil, something you put in. Gets you calmed down, ready for bed type of thing. Uh, lime, I have not used this at all. Uh, probably like much of the other uh, citrus fruits and oils. Uh, meant mostly for you know, cleansing and uh, organ health, things like that. Probably something that works best orally. Um, eucalyptus, uh, if you have ever eaten a cough, cough drop or taken cold medicine, you probably know what eucalyptus is. Uh, it's a very mentholated kind of uh, oil. It will uh, kind of clear out your sinuses. This is one of those ones that I will use in my diffuser at night. Uh, it'll be part of my blend. It just kind of helps open everything up. Uh, it's also very soothing and calming, helps you with rest and recovery. Uh, tea tree. A lot of people use tea tree oil for their hair, their skin, their nails. Uh, it's very healthy for uh, both topical application. Uh, it also smells very pleasant and it's very calming and soothing. It's very good to put in a diffuser. Tangerine. Again, another citrus oil. I have not used this much in the first couple weeks. Uh, I think a lot of these citrus oils are uh, either best for consumption or if you do not like, you know, some of the the smell of some of your oils like if you, you're just not a big fan of maybe the the eucalyptus smell or the uh, tea tree smell and you like something a little bit sweeter if you're a person who likes you know fruity or um, sweet smelling candles in your home you may like to add some of the um, the citrus oils just to help make that smell a little bit more palatable to you uh, lavender, this is something that is uh, used at night. This is specifically for uh, relaxation. It's very much like chamomile, which is just, it's one of those oils, one of those substances that just really brings, uh, brings you down, helps you to kind of relax, calms your mind. Um, it, this is one of those things that you do either topically or in a diffuser. So some people add it to the bottom of their feet or a little bit to their chest. Some people put it on their pillow. Uh, I put it in a diffuser right by the bed. Um, it does not smell very potent, um, which is nice. Like I, I don't like the smell if, if you've ever had those lavender candies. I don't like a really strong lavender smell. It's very subtle, but it's present. So it's not, if you don't really like the smell of lavender, it actually won't be that uh, intrusive of the smell to you. You'll actually get that slight lavender smell, but not really be like, oh God, I can't stand the smell of that, uh, that oil. Grapefruit, another citrus very much uh, 
attributed to cleansing. That smells very nice as well. Uh, probably one of those things that you can kind of add into a tea or put in the diffuser. Don't know if there's any real topical uses for that as of right now. And the last one, which I haven't probably will not use is the patchouli oil. Um, I opened up the bottle. It doesn't smell as bad as probably uh, some of like the incense in that uh, particular odor, but I'm just not a big fan of patchouli myself personally. Everybody has different olfactory receptors. Some people like it. I do not particularly like it, but it is attributed to uh, relaxation and calming. A lot of a lot of essential oils are probably more geared towards you know calming, bringing kind of back to a recovery or a calm state of mind. And when you are calm your you know your immune system works more effectively uh, you get better rest more restful sleep you're able to recover better um, so you know a lot of these aren't particularly stimulants they are just more intended to help your body kind of go through the cycles and the things that it needs to do a little bit more effectively whether that's cleanse whether that's rest things to that effect um, as i've mentioned i've put things like bergamot and um, lemongrass on my muscles. I've used that muscle blend that I showed you, which is a combination of, um, I think it was wintergreen, peppermint, uh, chamomile, camphor or chamfer, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, um, eucalyptus, something. It, it smells like icy hot, but doesn't have the burning sensation of the icy hot. So uh, that's nice to kind of put. I put it on my back. I've put it on my shoulder. Uh, in the diffuser, in a general sense, each night I have put in a combination of lavender, uh, eucalyptus, a little bit of the bergamot, and uh, I've changed things up uh, depending on what kind of smell I've had. I've tried a little bit of cinnamon to make it a little bit more uh, sweet and pleasant smelling. Uh, I have tried adding a little bit of lemon to make it a little bit more fresh scented. So I'll usually use those three oils and then I will kind of scent it with um, maybe what I wanted to smell the most, whether I want to use maybe a sweet orange or uh, if I wanted to use peppermint to make it a little bit more, more fresh and minty type of smell. But as I said, right now, uh, in, the, in the two weeks of very brief experience that I have with the essential oils, I feel like I've noticed uh, I've had really, uh, you know, a long ride last weekend and my muscles, my calves, I mean, they were really locked up tight and I was walking around the house not thinking I'd be able to ride the next day and I added a little bit of a combination of the lemongrass, the bergamot, uh, and a little bit of, I think even uh, peppermint right to my skin on the back of my calves and my legs. I woke up the next morning and you wouldn't know that my legs felt all locked up the night before. They felt fantastic. Uh, using this diffuser each night before I go to bed, it's helped me kind of calm my mind to kind of keep the running thoughts of maybe the, the night at work or uh, the day before or responsibilities. It help me, helps me to kind of quiet that so I can get sleep. Helps me to get a little bit more of a restful sleep. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be 100% foolproof. You know, we always have things and stresses in our lives or, or things that might keep us up at night, but it has definitely made a difference. It's helped me to wake up uh, with, uh, you know, less of the negative effects of the allergens in the air. So right now, two weeks in, uh, it's something I enjoy uh, using. It's something that doesn't take a whole lot of thought. It only takes a couple seconds of your time. It's not a regimen that's very time consuming. You know, you put a little water in your diffuser, you tip the bottle upside down, you let a couple drops siphon in and, and you go. You don't have to get uh, too much into it. You know, a little bit of cursory research online or even with the pamphlets that come with these oils will give you some good starter tips for recipes. And as I said in the beginning, if you guys have any uses or recipes or tips that you use for essential oils, um, I've already had a couple people on my original video, please leave them in the comments down below because I'm willing to try new things and uh, I got a nice little scent here or set here and I'd like to combine them in different ways and see what works best. <music> I think the cats actually like the, the essential oils too. As I brought them home, they seemed kind of attracted to the box. And as I put them in the diffuser, they like to be in the bedroom. Actually, I had it on as I was making this video and uh, Gracie kind of nuzzled right up on the bed, right on the blanket there. Uh, she doesn't always jump on the bed and sleep. Sometimes she likes to go you know, under the bed or somewhere dark during the day while the light is out but she uh, kind of nuzzled right in there next to me while I was uh, doing my video, while I had the uh, diffuser going with some of the leftover oils from last night. And it seems very soothing to them too. So a lot of times uh, you can kind of take a, 
a cue from your animals. If it's, if it's affecting them, it's kind of, okay, well, we're not talking about a placebo effect anymore. It's actually biologically affecting uh, a living being. I don't know. I don't know. Well, another late night at work. I am exhausted. I think taking a recovery day made me feel more tired than uh, had I ridden my bike. I don't know, something about getting on the bike and riding in the morning kind of sets the, uh, the tone for the day, keeps your energy level high, and all day today, I've just been struggling to just not yawn, not feel kinda tired. I got enough sleep last night. I think it's just a matter of my body is starting to uh, absorb the fatigue. So we'll see how I feel tomorrow after another good night's sleep. Um, I'll get back on the bike tomorrow and just kind of ride as I feel. If I'm feeling good, if I'm feeling powerful, I'll, I'll uh, do some intensity. And if I'm still feeling tired and sluggish, it's just gonna be a uh, you know, quick, hour to maybe 90 minute recovery ride, but I'm gonna get my ass to bed so I can get a good night's sleep. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.